So next we're going to take a look at some uh, biasing configurations for a class AB output stage. We mentioned that in order to avoid that dead band region, we need to provide a voltage VBB uh, to the basis of the output transistors so that the base emitter junctions will be turned on even when the signal is equal to zero. Uh, one possible biasing configuration is the addition of two diodes in series as shown in this figure. Uh, we have diodes D1 and D2 that are providing that VBB voltage that essentially biases the base emitter junctions of output transistors QN and QP. Uh, notice that there is a, a current source I bias uh, whose job is essentially to bias those diodes D1 and D2 so that they are, they are turned on. Uh, normally, uh, note that I've written there QN and QP, which are the output transistors, are typically large geometry devices. And the reason for that is because they may need to provide large currents to the load. However, D1 and D2 don't need to provide any large currents. The maximum current that's going to flow through them is going to be in the order of the base currents of the output transistors. And so they can be made smaller than the output transistors, and they typically are, to save space and save power. Um, and so normally there is a ratio of N, I've labeled there, between the output transistors and those D1 and D2 diodes, which, especially in an integrated circuit, they're typically implemented as diode-connected transistors. So that the quiescent current um, IQ of the output transistors is equal to N times the bias current, N being the ratio uh, between the uh, size also, the area of the base emitter junction of the output transistors versus the biasing diode connected transistors. Uh, this circuit has some advantages and some limitations. Uh, the key advantage of this circuit is that it provides thermal stability. And the reason for that is, as we shall see, the um, AB, the class AB output stage uh, is prone to thermal runaway. It has a positive feedback mechanism uh, whereby an increase in temperature uh, produces changes in the circuit that essentially reinforce that change, uh, reinforce the continued increase in temperature. And if the temperature continues to increase without bound, it can lead to thermal runaway. It will eventually damage the transistors because transistors can only support uh, a junction temperature of about 150 to 200 degrees C. So we need to have some sort of mechanism to counteract um, the effect of an increase in temperature, some negative feedback, and diodes D1 and D2 provide that. Notice that um, QN and QP, as the uh, current flows through those transistors, let's imagine that we have a load that is pulling current uh, to the output, and therefore uh, transistor QN is going to be sourcing that current to the load. Now, if I have an increase in current, through QN, I have an increase in power dissipation through QN, and therefore I have an increase in temperature. My junction temperature increases. As the temperature increases, uh, if VBE is held constant, the current IC will tend to increase, and therefore the current will continue to increase. It will give rise to uh, further power dissipation, which will produce higher temperature increases. And therefore, that's, that's the process known as thermal runaway. Um, Q, uh, diodes D1 and D2, if they are placed in close thermal contact to the output resistors QN and QP, can prevent this thermal runaway problem. Uh, the reason for that is because they have a negative temperature coefficient. The uh, voltage across a diode or the VVE uh, of a diode-connected transistor, of a um, BJD transistor, they all have negative temperature coefficients of about minus 2 millivolts per degree C. And that means that the voltage uh, VVE, or the voltage across the diode, decreases as the temperature increases. And so notice how that creates that negative feedback loop in the circuit, where if my uh, current increases, causing an increase in power dissipation, causing an increase in temperature, then that increase in temperature is going to cause a reduction in the voltage drop across diodes D1 and D2, which is going to cause a reduction in VBB, therefore reducing the VBE voltages of the output transistors Q1 and QP. 
uh, which in turn will reduce the amount of collector current uh, flowing through those transistors. And so uh, there is that sort of negative feedback mechanism and what it's going to cause is for that collector current to remain approximately constant as opposed to continue to increase with temperature. So that's a good advantage of, um, of this configuration. In order to, um, to take advantage of it, we will need to have D1 and D2 placed in close thermal contact to the output transistors, which in IC design is easy to do. They will just need to be placed in close proximity to the output transistors. In discrete circuit design, uh, they oftentimes will be mounted on the metal case of transistors QN and QP. There is some limitations associated with the circuit. Uh, the main limitation will be that um, as my collector current increases, as we mentioned, when my transistor QN is sourcing current to the load, uh, I'm going to need to um, to push more base current into that output transistor QN, and that base current is coming from that bias current source, and therefore I bias needs to be greater than uh, the maximum load current divided by the beta of transistor QN. Maybe we should label it beta N. And uh, what that means is that the, there is a minimum amount of bias current that we need to have available, and therefore uh, D1 and D2 cannot be made arbitrarily small, or arbitrarily smaller than the output transistors. There's a limit to that. Uh, another disadvantage or another limitation is that, as we mentioned, when QN is sourcing current, there is a decrease in the amount of current flowing through the diodes D1 and D2 because part of the I bias current is to go to the base of QN and therefore uh, there is a small decrease in that VBB voltage since there is a, a relationship between the current through a diode and the voltage across a diode. And so there are other configurations that will give a more stable value for that bias voltage.